Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan, and I believe in humanity first. It's the idea that humans, no matter what your ethnicity, political views are, religious views are, you're always going to be worth more than something stupid, like an alien or a dolphin that's been trained to kill any humans. But today I have an interesting question to ask you guys. How do you think humanity would respond if all of a sudden we had mutants walking among us? I'm not talking about just having a third nipple or webbed toes. I'm talking about X-Men level mutations that would give individuals a huge advantage in life. Would things play out like they did in the recent X-Men films? Will the Colonel Strikers and Boulevard Trasks of the world prevail, or will mutants like Professor X and Keanu Reeves help bridge the gap between their kind and ours, and create a better future for all? Well, that's what we're going to be looking at in today's video. In the earlier days of human civilization, we Homo sapiens were not alone. There were other species of humans who were genetically quite different from us, far more than the difference between, say, a person from Africa compared to a European or Asian. There were other species like the Neanderthal, who mainly populated northern areas of Europe. They were generally stockier than modern humans and had larger bodies. This was an evolutionary development that allowed them to live in more extreme environments. Although it's not completely known what happened between the Neanderthals and Homo sapiens when they first encountered each other, studies of our DNA and archaeological findings suggest that our two species coexisted and even interbred. The thing is, on paper at least, the Neanderthals seemed superior to Homo sapiens. For one, they had thicker limbs and were much stronger than we were, and they also had more fast twitch muscle fibers, allowing them to expend great amounts of energy within a short period of time. Neanderthals also had a larger brain and potentially even better eyesight. Some people would say that they were different enough from us to be considered mutants. But despite all of their genetic gifts, the Neanderthals, because of their spawn point, generally lived in tougher environments that sustained smaller populations. And roughly around 30 to 40,000 years ago, the Neanderthals disappeared. We're not sure if this was because Homo sapiens wiped them out, or maybe we just absorbed them by interbreeding. There are other theories that when the Homo sapiens and Neanderthals mingled together, we carried diseases that the Neanderthals had no resistance to, and they basically died out because of these diseases. It's an interesting thing to think about because all animals, including humans, have an evolutionary survival instinct that helps us procreate and pass on our genetic material. Oftentimes this means destroying other groups that are different from you and joining forces with individuals that are very similar to you. Even in our short human history, racism has been prevalent in almost every society and culture. It's only recently that ethnically diverse areas have sprung up, usually in more developed and progressive areas of the world. In the United States, even in these super diverse areas, it's still pretty hard for people to let go of their tribal thinking. But as an individual who is traveling almost constantly around the world, it quickly becomes obvious that what we have here in New York is a rare and beautiful thing. I'm not saying that New York City is the only place where you can find this diversity, but most countries, especially developing nations, have a very homogenous society. It's our default setting. And no matter how much diversity training you give a person or how much you learn about their culture on YouTube, it usually takes a face-to-face -face interaction to break down stigmas and stereotypes. It's during these interactions with other people that we finally realize that we're not all that different from one another, especially when we can find common ground and have shared experiences. But if humans can find reasons to kill each other because of our differences in skin color or beliefs, then what do you think is going to happen when a certain percentage of the population turns out to have superpowers? The internet is probably one of the best inventions of the century. It connects the entire world and it allows us to access all of our collective human knowledge in something as small as a smartphone. But with the good comes the bad, and while a lot of knowledge is being shared, so is a lot of nonsense. And as we've seen constantly in the news cycle, a lot of misinformation can lead to death and destruction. In Western India, several traders were killed by mobs when false rumors about child kidnappers wandering in the neighborhood had spread on WhatsApp. Another example would be Myanmar, where there's been a huge influx in cell phone usage and internet usage in the country in the last five or six years. Facebook went to great lengths to make their services available there, oftentimes giving people free data in their plans when browsing on Facebook. Out of the 13.7 million internet users in Myanmar, 11 million of them have Facebook accounts. It's gotten to the point where the word Facebook and internet are exchangeable. But during the recent Rohingya crisis where over 150,000 people were displaced by the government, Facebook was used by extreme political and religious figures to incite violence against the Rohingyas, oftentimes by using false claims. 
The military junta in Myanmar only lifted extreme censorship on the internet in 2011. Which means most people in Myanmar are not that experienced with using the internet and perhaps a bit naive on how accurate the information they get from the internet is. Now imagine what would happen when information about the mutants is revealed. How many lynch mobs do you think will be created? How many random individuals are going to be dragged away by large angry crowds? How many more Christchurch incidents are going to happen? How many more Sri Lanka incidents are going to happen? It makes sense why so many mutants lived in hiding and why maybe it was a good idea to keep it that way. Especially back in the 60s and 70s in America where we were still going through the civil rights movement. Black people in the South literally had to use different facilities and were banned from many establishments and opportunities in life, including life itself. So the political climate along with how advanced and progressive society is at the time will heavily determine how humans will interact with mutants. And a lot of that depends on which trajectory our society is going to now. We've established earlier in the video that wanting to be surrounded by people who ethnically are similar to you is an instinctual thing. But there are other instincts that we have that we try to suppress for the betterment of society. Like the urge for men to run around and have sex with every moving object. Having said that, there is nothing really morally wrong with a white person who just wants to hang out with white people, and the same goes with black people with a similar mindset. But our society today is full of individuals who are morally outraged by people with different views from them, to the point where they have an almost religious and unshakable belief in their values and consider anyone against them as evil. Not only is this a very stupid and closed-minded way to view the world, it's also not conducive to creating a healthy society where ideas are freely exchanged. People who like hanging out with their own race are not evil, or even morally inept, they just have a different worldview and perhaps limited exposure to other races. And you'll never really be able to convince them if you call them something toxic like racist. In order to exchange ideas, you have to create a good environment where there's mutual respect and understanding between two individuals. And something that used to be obvious before everyone started taking extreme sides. And that's kind of the approach we have to take with mutants as well. Now obviously we could just kill them all and study their DNA and weaponize it for our military so when the aliens come we're prepared. I'm cool with that, but if we want to create an inclusive society with mutants, we cannot force people to accept them, it has to happen naturally. Instead it will take individuals like Professor X and the X-Men to show us why we should trust them. It might not be fair to ask this of mutants, but as the other, as the different individual, they'll have to shoulder this burden because of the limits of human society. They'll have to figure out a way to police themselves and keep their own people in line, which is another unfair thing to ask, but it only takes one mutant killing a normal person to start a war. But what if popular forever pushes the president to lock these individuals into cages? Will a first term president cave into all that pressure? Is it even legal? American citizen has basic human rights, but does an American citizen have to be pure human? What about basic human rights given by the United Nations? The big question would be, are mutants human? This will be not only a scientific debate, but also an ideological one. With no precedents, there would be several groundbreaking legal cases debating these issues and establishing the parameters of what a mutant is. People and organizations will take sides and politicians will campaign for either side, but I think at the end, because of a mutant sentience and also its similarity to human beings, I think the path of inclusion will be something that will happen in a lot of places. Obviously other countries will lock them up and throw them into prison. The Chinese government has locked up two million Uyghurs in prison and their only crime is that they have beards, don't drink wine, eat pork, and read the Quran. They're not exactly running around and exploding people with their minds. But even if society decides to accept mutants as humans, how will they be integrated into society? The mutants in X-Men all have generally positive mutations. For instance, there's no Birdman whose bones are as brittle as a bird or a water melting woman whose body melts when it encounters water. So if all these X-Men have some kind of advantage when compared to the rest of society, will our laws and benefit programs treat them differently? Will they be disqualified for welfare? Will they have to pay certain penalties come tax time? More importantly, will they have to register with the government and declare on an official form that they are a mutant and what abilities they have? I think most governments will see it as their own responsibility to determine how dangerous these individual mutants are. Cyclops without his glasses could easily kill tons of people. Rogue, who's basically an energy vampire, could do the same by just touching someone. And let's not even talk about Magneto and Jean Grey. Some mutants, especially the really powerful Alpha and Omega ones, definitely will be registered with the government. 
If your eyes can shoot energy beams out of them, how different are they from firearms? What if you have metal claws that are basically giant knives that extend out of your hand, and on top of that, you are bulletproof? If you're standing in some quiet suburban town, the local police probably want to know that there's an individual in their community that they cannot stop. The North Hollywood shootout in the 90s militarized the police after they weren't able to stop two armored gunmen. One, the realization that mutants were walking amongst us further militarized the police and security forces. Wouldn't you, as a normal human being, feel more comfortable that the police could actually stop these superhumans? So most likely, the government will have to employ mutants who will protect us from other mutants. Because it would be very hard to develop a defense against the type of mutants in X-Men. They all have different abilities that are quite random. Someone like Mystique, who can basically deepfake but in real life, will cause tons of issues for security forces. Whereas if you're fighting Magneto, specially made non-metallic weapons and equipment need to be created as well. It would be basically a logistical and bureaucratic nightmare to take account for every mutation possible. An alternative solution might be to just give the mutants their own country and land. Allow them to self-govern, but also surround the border with tanks and nuclear weapons. This would at least give their people a safe place where they can walk freely in the streets without fear and judgment being thrown at them. History has shown that ethnic minorities without their own nation oftentimes will suffer from genocide and discrimination. Look at the horrible things that have happened to the Kurds, Yazidi, Rohingyas, or the Jews and Armenians before they had their own homeland. This is also an ideal situation for humans because we no longer are responsible for controlling them or ruling them or whatever. Because as much as we humans try to help them, unless they are fully integrated into our society, they will always see humans as the others. Individuals who are trying to impose their rule onto them, which of course will create more conflict. And if it comes to war and they're all in one place, at least it'll be much easier for us to destroy them in one shot. Well, there you have it, guys. That's my analysis on how our world will actually react to a mutant uh, awakening or something like that. Let me know in the comments section below what you think about my analysis and what your thoughts on this are. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.